the vestibular system comes up from time to time in NLP. It, it arises in sort of bursts or waves, and there'll be a sudden burst of interest in the vestibular system. There was one back around 85 or 86, the first one, and uh, somebody named Thomas Jubb published a paper to the NLP community on the vestibular system. And it was a first attempt to grapple with the vestibular system. Somebody that, whose name I forget then actually had a vestibular-based NLP training, somewhere like out in the Utah Canyonlands. That kind of vanished. When I did my practitioner training, I did two practitioner trainings in a row, in, in tight sequence. And the first one I did in New York City with Annie Linden and Frank Stass. And that was a very New York-type training, very sort of street, street training, dealing with the street. Right after that, immediately after that, just a few months later, I decamped to Santa Cruz, California, where I took John Grinder's training, practitioner training. So, two, two prac tracks in a row. The, one of the things that I think completely distinguished John Grinder's uh, training at that time from an, anybody else, anyone and everyone else, was that, first of all, trainings back then were longer than they are now. So. The full time we were on the campus at UCSC was probably 24 days. Uh, and this was a residential training. So imagine you're not going someplace than going home. You're staying there. People flew in from all over the world and lived together communally for 24 days on this campus and practiced NLP around the clock. So th this was different than the way we do NLP now in, in many, many regards. But I think the chief distinguishing feature uh, that and John had brilliantly intuited was to put a ropes course in the middle of the training, which is very, very much a vestibular sensitizing and vestibular training type of activity. And this wasn't discussing the vestibular system. And as you know, if John is given the choice between discussing a subject and sensorially demonstrating the subject, he will go for the sensorial demonstration in a blink over the abstract discussion, although both have their place. So we did this ropes course, and there was a really good, highly set up um, ropes training camp of some sort. I had no idea who the uh, proprietors were, what relationship they had with John, but this thing had uh, quite, quite uh, challenging problems that were given to us that involved balance, uh, a lot of walking on wires between trees at 60 feet off the ground kind of things. Um, basically scare the pants off you type training that involved a, a huge amount of balance and, and balance consciousness. Scaling walls that no, no individual could scale, so you had to scale them by uh, groups of people working on them, standing on little tiny things off the ground, uh, communicating with each other by sending pulses through steel cables that were strung between trees or between uh, posts. So the, the vestibular component, the vestibular piece, has been in there for a long time. It's not something that just appeared recently. And I can go on at great length, and I probably will because the vestibular system is an area of, of specific interest to me that I've been very involved with in, in ways that um, are probably not all that well understood for a number of reasons, which I can go into that are technical and, and interesting and worth knowing, but not right now. So. It's very good that people are now raising the vestibular system again. Keep in mind the problem of set and setting. The way trainings are now conducted, you're sitting on these stiff, small chairs in sort of dark, uninspiring training rooms. And that's pretty much where trainings take place now. That's not the way it always was, I guarantee you. Uh, but in that, you get minimal to no vestibular st simulation. So the, I'd say one of my main critiques and problems with trainings as they are now is they delete. They're deleting all the vestibular data. There are, there are other ways to get to the vestibular system and vestibular stimulation, but you're not going to get them in training rooms. Or you can talk about them in the abstract or try to summon them somehow imaginatively or in trance. That's very, very different than being in an environment where vestibular awareness and positional awareness is a key component of the entire integration of the learning. So I will go on with this a bit. This is an excellent topic. Keep it alive and think about it a lot because this is where I think 
NLP that works and integrates and becomes part of the sort of the total life pattern of a person is distinguished in many ways from NLP that uh, is sort of an abstract, sort of a game or something like you just take a board game out and play the game for a while and move pieces around on the board versus having something fully embodied in your body map and your body consciousness and that's how you access it and that's how you work with it. So um, the vestibular system rocks more to come.